Hey guys, we're here for a new episode of the show that has yet to be named. We are going to be reviewing uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I'm here with Johnny Donuts, triple seven. Uh, not the word triple, but three sevens in a row. <laughs> not the word seven, but the actual number seven. It'll, It'll be, be in the bio. Uh, we are without Grizzly Adams today, so he didn't watch this, that's why. So, you know, don't be bad. <laughs> Don't be mad. I said, don't be bad. Uh, Bart don't, don't get not mad here either because uh, we lost him in a closet somewhere. So, uh, hey, Putty, what's up? So we're just going to jump right into this. Um, I'm yeah. going to let you uh, start it out. Let, let, let's, sure. let's, let's just give maybe some general thoughts and then we'll go through the show. Okay. So for me, general thoughts, it was really well written. The, the actor, every actor in that series played their character to perfection i think wyatt russell as u.s agent slash captain america was like to the point where he was receiving death threats on how good he was playing his character says something i i honestly think maybe russell may even deserve an emmy for this one i i think he played i can't i'm not arguing yeah he he played like it was really well written it was three episodes shorter than wandavision if you want to compare it to wandavision so i think it told a more concise story I think the runtime worked in its favor. Yeah. I think the, the problem with WandaVision was you should have went with like, what well, we, we said before, you should have yeah. went with like five or six one hour long episodes. And, Which is and what they did here. Took out the filler and just gave us the stuff we needed. Yeah, but this show exactly. is all of that. There's only action. one filler it episode. Action to action to action, like right away. Like it was no, there was no low spots. There were... Okay, there were a, few, a couple low spots, like when uh, Morgenthau's mother or the den mother, or whatever she was, when she passed away. That's kind of a lull in the story. Spoilers, like, guys. We forgot yeah. to tell you. This oh, is yeah. spoilers. It'll yeah, this is thing. spoiler filled. It's a full review. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but I mean, like there were a couple low spots, but then they pick it right up because that scene after when uh, when after the mother dies, they go. Uh, Sam Wilson goes after her. He's talking to her, but. Uh, Walker can't wait, so he barges in, and then uh, another spoiler here: when uh, she uh, she punches the hell out of uh, Battlestar and she kills him, and Walker goes off the deep end, kind of thing. Like so, with every lull, there's always a high spot that comes right after it, yeah. or they start you off on a high spot. The series started on a high spot with Falcon chasing after the LAF, and uh, Georges Saint Pierre comes back as Bartok. That starts you off. It's like as soon as you start watching, like, whoa, okay, that's how we're starting. Yeah, and it it looked really good. Yeah, the like, effects were amazing. In the, this. the effects for a TV show, I was like, huh? Because even in WandaVision, it didn't have stuff like this. Like yeah. this show, the combination of of VFX and like actual stunt work, yeah, it looks amazing. Isn't it crazy that if you don't film a whole movie on green screen, green how screen? good it looks? Okay. <clears throat> Zach anyway. Schneider. Um, so, um, yeah, but and no, it was like you said. It's. I mean, they clearly with Wandavision, they put their all their budget in the final two episodes. Where this one, you could see they went all out with this one. It was it was well written. It, the cinematography in this one was great as well. Yeah. Uh, like the, the actors, every actor who was in it, like I said, played their part extremely well, even down to the bit part actors with, uh, uh I think it's, uh, uh, Torres, Joaquin Torres, who spoiler is going to become the Falcon clearly. Um, but yeah, like even to the bit part characters, like they were played to perfection. Like I thought it was at least. I think the acting in this all around was really good. Um, in comparison to WandaVision, like I, I know it's, this is weird, but like the only other comparison we have is WandaVision, right? Right. Like, and I don't say, want to compare it because it wouldn't be fair. Yeah. So, but like just for contrast, I'm going to say if you look at like some of the secondary acting work in WandaVision, it's not good. It, it's really like stiff. Like you're a soldier. You have to say one line. Like, yeah. Jimmy's but even, over there. And but yeah, like, but but even some of the neighbors. Everyone Falcon. Yeah, Everyone but even some Falcon of the neighbors, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, Yeah, 100%. But it, it's like Falcon and Winter Soldier, every single person was on point. Well, going to secondary characters, like, you know, it differ, it uh, diverts a little bit from the comic because Flag Smasher in the comic is one person. It's Carl Morgenthau. Here they make it a group of people. But you really feel for them, not just Carly, who's their leader, but every single character in this group, you actually feel their struggle and feel their plight. And like, yeah, I guess I could sympathize with these guys a little bit. Not just like, it's not just the hero. There's a lot of shades of gray in this. Film, so that, that's this what show. I'm saying. This whole show is a shade of gray. And that's that's something that I don't, 
I didn't dislike, but it's definitely a small flaw that by the end of the show, I was like, spoilers, okay? Yeah. So the in the last episode, the turnaround of of um John what John's name? John Walker. John Walker. Of John Walker. Sorry, I don't know why I, did, I forgot his name. Yeah, but no, no. His turnaround was amazing. I fully yeah. embraced him as like the third member of this team for that little bit. And he understood that what he was doing before was wrong and that he needed to help now. Yeah. And but they foreshadowed that too in an earlier episode yeah. when when Battlestar says to him, you know, this serum doesn't make you stronger, it just enhances who you are. Yeah. And who you choose to be is what defines you. Yeah, exactly. And 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 he came through and I was very happy with that. But the, after that happened, it left you in this show with no villain because Zemo became part of the crew. He became yeah. part of the crew. Uh, Elaine is not, hasn't yeah. been like fleshed out as anything yet. We Countess know what Valentina. She is. We yeah. know where, what she's going to be, but she has not been fleshed out as a villain yet. So we don't have a villain there. Then you sympathize. Well, I don't, I didn't really sympathize with them, but I, I they understand. Killed off, they killed off Carly. Spo- that's again, spoiler, yeah. but they killed off Carly Morgenthau as well. So, and they killed off all the flags. And technically none of them were villains to begin with. No. So now you lost that fact. And then on top of it, GSP is gone. So you lost that villain. And now you have, um, Oh my God. What was the other one? Then when you find out who power broker is, you, yeah. and, and this is the thing for me, they're trying to make you not like her by doing this. Yeah. But the but, problem is you spent the whole show trying to get us to like her. And so now there's no villain. The show just ended up with no see, villain at all. Now, my thought on that is they revealed Sharon Carter as the power broker. But is she really? Because the end credit scenes of the final episode, she's talking to somebody. Yeah. So that could be setting up because there are, it has been greenlit for a second season. Yes. Which makes so, sense. And I think that's what it is. Now that she's in, back in with the CIA and back on U.S. soil with that full pardon, I don't really think they kind of threw it out there that she was the power broker. But I don't think she is because throughout the whole series, they always refer to the power broker as a he. He's watching you. He sees this. But I think so that's make intentional. Her- you think so? I okay. think it's intentional to throw you off that it was going to be her, even though everybody knew. Because personally, me from watching the show and gathering all the evidence... I was like, there's no way that she's power broker. It's not possible. And I probably even told you that. I'm like, yeah. I do not believe it. There's no way that she's power broker. Then in that last episode, as soon as you see her, I was like, oh my God, she's power broker. She's power broker, yeah. But and even it, George, uh, even uh, Bartok says it, like George St. Pierre, he goes, so you're the power broker, so you're going to pay me four times what I'm owed now. Yeah, and it, it's like, it's, out. it's kind of like, um, I, I don't agree with the move because she was such a, a fighter of justice and like, part of cap's team and then they retcon yeah. everything about her to make her this character and even though she's not like evil evil what power broker did is is was completely wrong yeah. yeah so the fact that that she's like still mingling with them like i don't know it just it came off really weird like i can't see myself yeah having the way that you gave me this character being not liking her now but also the fact that she was helping them out in the second or third episode when they yeah. go after finding the the uh, super serum and madripoor there um it's just like i think it's more the fact that she's not evil but disenfranchised with everything that's happening with the u.s government yeah which is fair but it, uh, it's just it's going to be hard now to to fact the fact that you're going to try to play her off. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what, to, yeah, what it's, you could do with this. It just seems like a really strange choice. Yeah. It's, it's okay. It's to, it's to quote a wrestling term here. You turn Baron Zemo baby face and you're trying to turn Sharon Carter into a heel. Yeah. And, and it's and not sometimes it work. doesn't stick. Yeah. Sometimes her, it doesn't her take. Her past doesn't, doesn't reflect the, the immediate flip that she pulled. Like yeah. it, and, and wrestling is such a good example because wrestling you will go from a baby face to a heel literally in one episode of raw and yeah. in real life that doesn't happen and but it feels like wrestling because she they're they're not even telling you like you you can feel how you want about this they're like no now you have to not like this person yeah. i'm like but you just told me i have to like this person like it's, i don't get it it's it's playing with the crowds it's playing with the audience like it's it's it but makes it, it makes me not want to it makes me not want to 
invest myself in that character. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to invest yourself in that character because now they're good. Now they're evil. Now they're good. Well, there's no consistency. So why am I invested in this character? You know what I mean? That's, that's like, a good way to put it. With, with, with Winter Soldier, like it was a slow burn where he was evil and it was a slow burn. He spent that time in Wakanda. It's still burning right now. This but whole show I mean. is the rest Like, of I the mean, burn. like, you know, it got you right here when at the final, one of the final scenes of the episode where he finally goes to his neighbor there and he says, I'm the one that murdered your son. It was like, geez, man, like that's heavy shit. Yeah. Like it was, it was, it was good. And he's still fighting for redemption. I just want to point out he, to me, he was the best part of this show. Not yeah. only do I do I already like this character because of him, the actor Sebastian Stan, and what yeah. he's done with it, but like he's so good in this show. His like he, range of being like thinking about being evil, being good, trying to deal with all of his past, then everything. Like Anthony Mackie was good, but he's too yeah. cartoonish. But even even throwing out some comedic elements too, like his comedic timing when he needed oh, to be funny, together he was there. they were amazing. Yeah, it was like you, like you say you love your buddy cop shows and buddy yeah, cop movies. This was what it I was. got it right in the, yeah. the filler in the filler episode. I got what I wanted. I was just waiting the for them the to boat? be fixing the boat and be like, "Let yeah. me tell you about my best friend." Best friend. Like I was waiting for that. No, to but come even on. even simple simple scenes like where he goes where he's trying to tighten the hose and he's like, "Well, why don't you just use your metal arm?" I forget it's there sometimes like just yeah. like little scenes like that that don't that's a throwaway line but it just impacts it so much no I I fully agree with that I I there there's the balance here between comedy and um, action and, and action and drama and like just baseline story and world building is so much better than WandaVision and like I'm not trying to harp on wandavision but now having watched this i yeah. i went back and i watched like a little bit of wandavision actually like in between episodes it's too cartoony and to me i honestly want to lower my rating on wandavision it, it's because there's no world building you yeah the it's whole not. story is just and i get this is the good part like the acting and stuff is good the the building of that friendship of the three guys uh cat dennings and uh those guys i don't remember anybody's name i'm yes. not with names I'm james not woo guys. is the yeah, yeah. james woo and uh, that yeah, was yeah. good yeah. and then the evolution of the character of wanda was great but everybody else literally doesn't matter yeah and and i didn't realize that the fr on the first watch on the second watch i'm like now that you know what the show becomes no one else ma storylines matter at doesn't all. matter like you don't you're not invested in the the fake pietro character anymore because yeah. you know what he becomes right exactly. he's not really who he is at least this like even just like even some of the undertones of the storytelling like some of the side stories like there was a whole commentary on race in this in this series yeah about how America puts down African-Americans and stuff like that. And it was a great social commentary too. Without some of it was amazing. It, some yeah. of it towards the end was a little bit forced and I don't feel yeah. like negatively forced, but it was like so shoehorned into the episode. And like the Isaiah Bradley statue. Yeah, no, nah, I don't, I'm okay with that. It's yeah, like the, okay. the stuff before that, like when he went back with the the shield, with the shield, that was just leave it in the bag. <laughs> I liked that part because it made me realize that there's a generation of African American people that are like, don't believe that they're that this is valuable for them to do. It's like negative, but then yeah. there's when you see the kids playing after, you're like, Captain America to them is a sign of good, yeah. And, and and like righteousness and and that's why like he understood from seeing his nephews play that this is what they need is a role model right a ro exactly and i like that stuff it's the stuff yeah. before where it's like there's a cop and he's black and and i was like okay that that scene was forced i agree with i agree oh is this man bothering you kind of thing and i'm not it's saying like, it's not a problem but you could tell that they literally yeah. were like this is what's happening right now in the world look we did it in the show yeah that's I mean, why, right? But I think that, like, even though they did that, I still feel that they approached it with that right dignity and respect, as opposed. No, it, to, it was none of it was bad. Yeah, it yeah. just there. You could see the parts where it's like completely shoehorned in, and you're like, okay, yeah. I, I see that. There was then, even a lot of other stuff, like political stuff. Yeah, where you're like, why are you even bringing this up? What does this have to do with anything? That and that. But whole Sam's speech, speech at the end, that speech at the end, Sam's I thought was great. Was great. But the yeah. actors around him talking, like giving him the talking points was like, 
No. When does it, this happen? That when should have been a re- speech. That should have been yeah. just a speech by Falcon. And just everybody is so dumbfounded that they just shut up. Yes, because and it was like if I was the politician there, I wouldn't have continued to to give you stuff to talk about. I would have just walked away. Yeah. Like they all stood there knowing there's a camera cameras rolling and we're like, but yeah, this is what we tried to do. And he's like, no, it wasn't. No, but then this is it. what we tried to do. Like, no, why didn't you just leave guy? Like you're, yeah. you're what you're a president, a Senator or whatever. You don't have to yeah. talk to him. You don't have to talk to anybody. Um, but no, other than that, like I found like, even like I said, a couple of parts here and there, but in terms of social commentary, it was really good as well. Yeah, like, I mean, uh, there, it, it was. told, it told, and I think that's what made it work as well. It literally felt like a mini series as opposed to like a TV series. I, I, any, like, I really like, this is like, it kind of falls into that category, I guess. I really like the acceptance of Winter Soldier that people, yeah. even after knowing everything he did and realizing that that wasn't him. He was under control the whole time. He was never this guy. Like you meet Bucky in the first Captain America and he's like a genuine like friend. He's like Steve Rogers' best friend. And Steve Rogers knows him better than anyone. And that's why he never gave up on him. And And that's why he trusted him. Yeah, It comes through with, uh, oh my God, I can't remember anybody's name. What the hell is Falcon's name? Sam Sam Wilson. Sam Wilson. You see it come with him. Then you see it from his family. Then you see it from the friends. And you see, you see it from the old um, guy Isaiah that he killed his son, yeah. and you yeah. see it or from Isaiah Japanese, Bradley. Yeah. How 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 like people are just they understand what happened to him and they don't hate him for it. It wasn't his fault, and he's trying to make right on his wrongs, and that's at the base what it is. And if you truly are sorry for what you did, even though it's not your yeah. fault, forgiveness should be there. I think, I, I, and and like I don't know about that in all situations, but it, it works with this for the most. Yeah, and, in this and situation, it works. I think yeah. they use the same idea of what they're doing to with someone you already know, and they apply that to the flag smashers because they use yeah. the same thing. Like they they're not fighting this because they ha- they want to. They have to do this. Because they yeah. believe in what they're doing and, and what they think they're doing is right. They don't think they're doing something wrong. The problem is the execution of what they're doing is wrong. And yeah. Bucky Bucky understands that. And so does Sam. That's why Sam wants to talk to her. Listen. Wants to talk, yeah, well, I agree with that completely. Like, uh, it's just at the end, too, when after they kill Carly towards the end, it's like she goes, I, I see it now and I'm sorry. I sh-, like, you know what I mean? They act- She actually tries to get that redemption at the end as well. I wish that didn't happen. I'll yeah. tell you why. Because it's like you had the conversation with him and we know how you felt. We know you yeah. felt bad already. She says, because a couple episodes earlier, she said, if people have to die, people have to die. They're just yeah. uh, they're just pawns in the in the grander and then scheme. She goes so over the top in that final scene where just burn them, give him something to save. And yeah. it's like, we're like, wait, what happened? And then all of a sudden, after becoming this super evil person out of nowhere, at the end, she's like, oh, I'm dying now. I'm sorry. Like, what? Well, I mean, things change significantly when you're on your deathbed, right? I get like, it, I but mean, it's like... I don't know. I've never died before. So. I mean, but you, you know what I mean, right? It's yeah. such... You, you went through two complete flips in a matter of 20 minutes. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay. So we already knew you were, you don't believe what you're doing is bad, but you also know that you're not evil and you did something completely evil. And then we're like, no, nah, it's cool. I didn't do that. I, I'm yeah, sorry. I, don't, I, I didn't mean it. It's okay. Yeah. Jokes, right? <laughs> but I get it. Sam Wilson was looking for her redemption. And he, yeah. when he carried her out, he, he's such an, I, I love him right now because yeah. he reminds me of Cap. He's he is, so yeah. honorable. Everything about him is like, whether or not it's for America, I still believe that these are the things that are right and I'm going to uphold what I believe is right. And if I believe deep down you're a good person, I'm yeah. going to try to find that good person. Yeah. It's it's the same thing that Steve Rogers, Captain America, would do is just to try to see the good in people. Yeah. It's and not flaw focus. That, it's a big flaw that Tony Stark ha- didn't have. Yeah. Was that Tony Stark didn't see the good in people. No. Tony Stark believed that machines were, were, were better because they didn't have – a right emotions. or wrong it was yeah. just objective and and you see that you see that that's the argument that happens and then you have thor who believes that he's the one that should make decisions because he's a god and it's like yeah. they're like no you don't own people right and and he learns that throughout the the series the arc yeah and yeah, that's and i think that's what made those core group of avengers so good is because you all had those different clashing personalities 
and they played off each other really well. Like, yeah, Hulk thinks he's this and Iron Man thinks he's that. They, they don't like each other because one thinks they're stronger than the other, but then they're working together when they're creating Ultron. So yeah. they find that common ground. And I think that's why Avengers worked so well off topic here. But And you see that in this series as well, just to connect it back to the series, is that it was it felt like a little mini Avengers mini series because of the fact that you had, especially at the end, you had Falcon, who's capped now. You had U.S. Agent and you had Winter Soldier, all three of them working together for a common goal. That's the Avengers. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. that that's exactly what it is. And that's what it felt like. And I think that's They're rebuilding the, the universe, the universe without us knowing it. And, and I'm sure people obviously caught on. But yeah, it's it's so subtle between what's happening in WandaVision and what's happening here and the future shows that are coming that I don't even know if people notice that. They think that these are like one-off things, but you don't get it. They they just gave you Cap. They just it's a slow they burn. Gave you, you got your full redemption now for Bucky. Mm-hmm. Okay? You've introduced uh, Sharon is coming back, whether what capacity it is. You're going to get, uh, hopefully with Black Widow, you get Florence Pugh as the new Black, Black Widow. Widow. And but then sorry, Renner, off topic like, here too. Um, isn't uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus's Valentina, uh, Countess uh, Valentina? She she's showing up in that movie too, isn't she? No, she got removed out of that movie. Oh, okay, okay, I wasn't sure. They this is what happened. Remember how the lineup was set? Yeah, so they were going to introduce her there and then have her be in Falcon and Winter Soldier. But then they Falcon and Winter Soldier was coming out first, so they changed her. They refilmed her stuff to be her getting introduced uh, okay, in okay. this. And now I don't think she's in Black. Uh, Black Widow anymore. I think they but it could be scenes. in future. It could be in something in the future, though. Yeah. I, they got to keep her. That was a smart move. Yeah. Like, not only did you pull a good actor, you pulled yeah. a, you pulled a name that people like, and you you introduce her in a way that I love her cockiness. It's so like she's like, oh whatever, I don't give a fuck. That's like her whole yeah. attitude. Like, she's 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 great. Like, I mean, what about the government? Ah, eh, whatever, whatever. <laughs> it's very much like how like I don't know if you've watched her in Veep. No, I haven't, but I heard Veep is good. Veep is great, and she plays that character so well. Like, you know, how, like, for example, Jason Alexander got typecast in Seinfeld as George. Yeah. she She's able to break away from that now. She's had that success post-Seinfeld that now she's no longer just Elaine. It's, she's it's Julie funny that you, you say that, too, because it's like Jerry was, was Jerry and came in as Jerry and left as Jerry and never did anything else, where... Kramer was his own wacky guy and then became Kramer and could never go away from Kramer. And George came in as playing a bunch of roles and then yeah. became George and could never unplay George again. But even, Where, yeah, she's even, been even doing George's all kinds dad. of things. But even George's dad, uh, rest in peace, uh, Ben Stiller's dad there, uh, Jerry, yeah, Stiller. Jerry Stiller. He played the same character on Seinfeld than he did on King of Queens. Exactly the same character, which the is exact. He's the only part of King of Queens that kept me watching King of Queens because, like, he it was just watching him constantly. It's watching George, uh, Costanza again, yeah. right? George's dad. Yeah. But, like, but going back, she was, I, I think that, like, I agree with you that she was great cast in, in, this, in this role. Um, the whole casting, going back to it, the whole casting, but you were right about setting up the new Avengers, like, quote unquote, the new Avengers in a slow burn. Uh, again, to quote a wrestling term, this is long term booking. It's yeah. not. A resolution right now this is going to be a resolution of five six years and or seven years from now the good thing about that i like I, once again i'm not here to just throw knocks but the good thing about when marvel starts a slow burn as long as it's a prominent one they will execute it at some point it's going to come back where yeah. like there's small things that they they like hinted at that they didn't go back to but when it's something this big you know it's coming um, where DC will will give these things to you, and then the next movie retcons everything that happened, yeah. or the or the next one is here's everything, and there's no there's no build up, and 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 Marvel does it so well. Marvel does it better than Star Wars. Anyone like Star Wars was like, get ready for the slow burn of Ray. No, nope, never mind. No, never mind. And then, yeah. oh, it it's was, back again. <laughs> like they, I think off topic but i really think they messed up ray should have been obi-wan's granddaughter and not the empress i That's... okay wait i thought i was the only one that thought that no i, I because was like, there's an, an illegitimate child or but something. i mean i watched i've watched all the clone off topic here sorry guys but uh, but i've watched all of the clone wars mm-hmm. and obi-wan had a relationship with duchess satine of mandalore yeah and he even says it in the clone wars that i would have left the jedi order for you 
So that's why I think it would have worked as Ray as his granddaughter, because he could have had this illegitimate affair with her. Nobody knew about it. Kind of like the way Anakin hid Luke and they hid Luke and Leia away from Anakin. Yeah. Right. They could have told that same story and it would have been so, like, do you, do you think this, this is a good one. I know we're, we're way off topic here, but um, I, I have, I, I watch a lot of theories on it and this one made so much sense that like, I believe this personally in my heart that Luke and Leia are really Obi-Wan's kids with Padawan or uh, Pad, Padme. Padme. That I don't know because he never spent time with them. But if you see it, the reason, if you re- go through the rage that he has that builds up in that movie, the reason he gets mad at Obi-Wan is because every time he goes into the room, Obi-Wan it's will always be with Obi-Wan. her. I think more Obi-Wan is that protector. But, you know, okay. But I want to live Anakin, by that theory. That's my, that's my theory. Live. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's would, fine. It would make more sense from the other way around, though, because yeah. Darth Vader is like all powerful at that point. And for Luke to become so powerful, he would have needed to come from somewhere, right? Like yeah. Obi Wan was never that powerful of a Jedi. No, but he was the, always that older, like that older figure, that father figure that Anakin yeah. needed, right? So I think that's more, and that's why he took such care of Luke was because. Anakin can't take care of him, so I have to be the father to him, kind of thing. Oh, I like that. Oh, guys, you want to see a Star Wars video? Let us know. <laughs> yeah, uh, comment below if you want us to talk about Star Wars. Too. I know enough about Star Wars to do a video, yeah. um, and I know too much. Yeah, so there you go. He'll carry it. <laughs> but going back, to, going back there, like it was like that slow burn, and even like if for someone who's a long term comic fan like myself, it's I've been reading comics for over thirty five years, right? And just a little nuance is like, for example, you just introduced Wiccan and Speed into WandaVision. Now you introduced Isaiah Bradley's grandson, which mm-hmm. you didn't need to. Elijah Bradley, right? So now you have three young Avengers already set up. And they did him, uh, just cut, sorry to cut you off. They yeah. did him so much better. And uh, not that I didn't like Wiccan and uh, the Speed. other kid. Yeah. yeah. What a <laughs> bad kid. name. Like, I, I'm just going to pretend yeah. I don't know the name. Wiccan Speed and other and kid. Math. <laughs> uh, yeah exactly speeding crack so he uh they introduced them in a capacity where it, i don't think it was bad but they were like these are the kids these are the powers look at them and then with isaiah bradley's uh, grandson they did it in a way that was so subtle just to show you him they were like yeah. look he's here and they he's, never yeah and, and he had like, very few lines but you can kind of see that he's but you very kind protect- of liked him by the end he yeah. had a he had a small arc of I'm a grumpy teenager. I don't like you. Leave my grandfather alone to then. Where are we going? I can't yeah. wait to go. It's and it's just like, and he's just doing it to protect his grandfather. But he's, you know what? I think he sees the positive influence of Black's Captain America as well because he yeah. came around to it, which Isaiah Bradley was saying, no, don't do it. They won't respect it. But then when the kids saw him, you see it at the end how quickly he changed his personality yeah. towards his feelings towards Sam. He was like, I can't wait to hang out with you. And it's those little story nuggets in this series that kind of, I think that's what kind of puts it over the top for me. It's not, the filler was not just filler for the sake of filler. It actually had meaning to it. There was very little filler. But there was at least meaning to it and there was depth to it. Like it may have told like a little mini arc, like we said with uh, Bradley's grandson. It's a little mini arc that they didn't have to put in. That's filler, but it was there and it meant something in the end. Listen, you give me a show. Okay, this is the show I want. All right, Jimmy Woo. Okay. Um, Rambo, Cat Dennings, uh, Falcon, Winter Soldier, and Zemo, a six man team up. And they, where, they, where they go to nightclubs across they, America. They just dance. Got... <laughs> because Hashtag we gotta address... release the Zemo cut. Right. Well, you gotta, it's, we gotta, we can't not talk about this and not talk about the Zemo dance that blew up across the internet. Oh my like, God. And when... To the point where it blew up that they had to actually release an extended cut of him dancing. You know what? If that was not intentional for them, like as a PR stunt, that was so well executed by uh, Daniel Brühl. Daniel Brühl, like, he's fantastic. Oh I like him God. too. Yeah. For him to for him to see that it was catching on, and then go out and say, "Oh, there's an extended cut of me dancing." Like, oh, that's you nailed it, man. That was but like the hot topic for like that a was whole it. week. Yeah, it became a meme for a week, right? Yeah. And it's like that's all you want is just for it to go viral for a little bit and next thing you know it takes i would like to see the numbers for falcon and winter soldier Uh, i would assume it's going to be higher than wandavision i think also you know what it benefited too was one director directed all six episodes yeah and it it had a a set tone listen a lot of it was kind of in this gray area visually Mm -hmm. and like the movements of the camera like everything was good but it, it was there was a lot of like 
um, expected styling to like this type of show. Yeah. Like it didn't, it didn't veer too off the course like WandaVision did, but it, th- that didn't bother me because everything it did it on works. that course was so good that yeah. I never felt like, Oh, I'm so mad that it looks like a, a superhero show. No, I was like, no, oh, oh, look how good they did it. I mean, take one scene, for example, when they're trying to find the guy with the super soldier serum and they're in a shipping area with the crates. Yeah. That's a very basic scenery. Like you see that in every cop yeah. show, you see that in every drug movie, mm-hmm. you see that it's such a trope that you see all the time, but yet it still worked in the series. Okay. How cool was the scene where they get dropped off on the bridge and they like walk and then they get to the club and there was like that slow motion scene of them walking in walking together. Through, yeah. Oh, that was so sick. I was like, that was like, it, it reminds me of like, you know, take a, take a page out of a comedy like night at the Roxbury or something when they're walking into the club. Yeah, or something. They, they executed a lot of things really well. Yeah. Um, another thing that I want to talk about before we finish this. So um, John Waters, uh walker john waters is the director <laughs> i know i did that on purpose <laughs> um john waters walks into uh or, or sorry he kills the guy with the shield yes and okay so fantastic scene i think i i, I messaged you about it i don't know mm-hmm. for sure but i was like when i thought about it for like a week after i was like wait he killed a terrorist who was part of the group that killed his friend why would we feel bad that he did that yeah but I think it's, I think it's the fact that people have this notion of Captain America, that he's not supposed to do that. But then again, he wasn't, he didn't stand for the same thing Captain America stood for. He also, was out for, he was out for revenge. Cap, Captain America would never inflict revenge on somebody. Cap was, first of all, like, grew up, born and raised as the most honorable person who ever lived somehow. He never fought in a war. He never lived a bad life. He was happy-go-lucky the whole time. So when he got this serum, he s- stood for good like Superman, right? I want it, It's very much the same thing, like even down to the red, white, and blue color scheme. Yeah, and, and it makes sense. Superman raised in a small town by really, like, honest... Honest, upstanding like, citizens. God-fearing citizens yeah. that, that taught him to only do good. Well, I understand this. John Walker was... In did like six tours in tours. Iraq watching the PTSD. Die. Yeah, exactly. So he's trained to kill. He doesn't understand that captain. So to me, when I thought about that, I was like, yeah, I don't feel awkward in this situation anymore. I completely understand it. Someone killed his best friend. The only yeah. person he had left from all of his, his tours. war stuff. It was him the only and his person fiance. he had left. Yeah. And you, you killed him. Uh, why wouldn't he kill you you're not a good guy at the end he's yeah. like i wasn't the guy yeah but you're still part of a terrorist group like why organize would I- it i think uh, but uh, that's it, we see it from a different angle that other people may see it people who just watched the marvel uh, and avengers movie yeah. okay captain america is no longer captain america this is the new captain america so i think maybe like this is just an assumption maybe people are just assuming that he's going to be like steve rogers cap uh, you know what i mean like american they like play red it. white and blue they play it off in the show, yeah. like you are supposed to feel bad, and I, I, I mean, yeah. I, I was like, why would you do that? I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see what's going to happen. That's why, and I, they did it in a way that you should feel that. But then when I thought about it, my, I came to that conclusion after, and I was like, wait, I don't feel bad. But they did such a good job yeah. making me believe that I should. Yeah, and, I and Wyatt like, Russell wait, too. Like even though the first couple episodes, you see him trying so hard to be accepted by the Avengers. He wasn't. Listen, this is this is a common thing, and I think this theme is put in this movie on. On, or in the show on purpose it's sort of like a bullying thing yeah so they kept telling him fuck off we don't want to play with you like you're a loser leave us alone yeah you're, you're not, not a superhero you're not Steve. You're not so Steve. he did whatever he could to prove to them that he was a superhero and then when they finally said still said no to him he was like i'm gonna do whatever it takes to do this and then through and i'm gonna show all, you through getting all his anger out he realized i'm not this guy so i think his role of u.s agent is gonna be like vigilante type sort of thing yeah but he's slowly gonna get coerced into being evil by like an off the by... books kind of yeah yeah because if they go the way i think they may be going with uh uh the the countess over there in the comics she does become a member of hydra she yeah. becomes lady hydra that's what i mean so i could see him slowly getting turned brainwashed evil because yeah. he seems like he's very like easy to manipulate him yeah. yeah, like his emotions get the best of him. And like, see how proud he was at the yeah. end when they announced him as U.S. agent. Yeah. And like, Any, he's anybody very. Anybody who was mad at him and said to him, Death Threats, first of all, you're a clown. Second of all, it's a, t- like it's a TV show. You're a clown. Second and that of all, shows though, the range oh, of Russell. 
the the fact that he turned it around at the end like how stupid do you feel like he he was yeah. such a a, a feel good turnaround yeah. in the end that it's like I kind of wanted him to be cap too. I was like, yeah, we can have three captain Americas right now. I'm totally good with that. Like, I mean, that's, and that's why it felt like that little mini Avengers. It felt like a little mini Avengers because it just all three of them together. You get that feeling like, okay, here we go. They're like I said previously, they're getting together for the greater good to take down the one evil corporation or one evil entity. Like, and like I said before, like, and clearly he gets it from his father because uh, Kurt Russell, I've always been a fan of Kurt Russell and Wyatt is just like following in his father and mother's footsteps. I mean, like, that family has produced good quality actors, yeah. you know, like Kate Hudson's pretty good. And uh, so yeah. is Goldie Hawn. So it's not like, yeah. So they have a good track history, but I think this is the first time an actual father and son duo appeared in Marvel properties, isn't it? Because Kurt Russell played ego in guardians. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Yeah, probably like as prominent right? characters. I'm sure yeah. it was like a cameo from somebody's like right. father at some point. But yeah, no, yeah. but as prominent main characters that are going to be around, like, yeah, that that's uh, and and they did it well. I mean, they they do everything yeah. pretty well. I'm very excited to see where this goes. Yeah, um, and it doesn't have to lead any into anything. That's what I like about this series. Wandavision. There was the whole tease that this is going to lead into Doctor Strange. Yes, yes, but it and worked. This one. It, it did work to a certain point, yes. But this one is just a standalone mini series. It was like a little mini event, and it's con- and it's contained in one six episode. Bubble. And it worked in a way that you could absolutely continue to do this because Captain America, on his own, okay, uh, as like a singular character, belongs in these smaller, uh, more like like not world threat political political situations like similar to like which it's more funny to say is like a batman batman works better as an episodic every time it's a new villain i'm fighting to to save the city where superman is like i should be saving the world with everything i do it's weird when you have superman against lex luther and lex luther is just trying to grow earth but it's so, like it's like the meme, right? You know, the yeah. like with uh, Bruce Wayne and Lex are just throwing cash at each other in money fight, right? Yeah, like exactly. And he works better as a Batman. He would work better as a Batman villain, Lex Luthor. Yeah, if you if you put real money behind it, like these shows are doing, or like the friggin' Lord of the Rings show did. Oh, oh my God! Did you see? You that? could How make four hundred something. You could make a wicked Batman show, like a wicked Batman show. You could yeah. have Robert Pattinson as Batman in the Batman show. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be opposed to that. I and imagine not... all of the detectiving he could do when you give him more time to be a character. Yeah, and slowly build his. That's character what makes his comic person. so good. The Snyder Scott Snyder. Yes, run def- made him so that. good because they brought back the detective side of Batman, and the he was human actually side, solving crimes. Where he was constantly losing and having to figure out what am I going to have to do to beat this guy. Yeah, he had to use his mental prowess above everything else. Right. So it was, yeah, that's Scott Snyder on on the and, and Cap was, works like that. Yeah, and and, and having Bucky, short bursts and having Bucky around, and not just for the character but for his acting and to play off of Sam and give him an actual power because Sam doesn't really have power, right? No, so he's it, just a guy. It, it gives Cap a, a reason to fight stronger people because at least he has someone who's super power to have his back. Yeah, and and I think and the fact that the relationship between Sebastian Stan and I forgot Anthony Mackie, yeah. the relationship between those two, you could feel the chemistry between them. Oh, like man, it's, it was so it's, good. it was not forced. It didn't no. feel like it was forced. Like not at you all. know, sometimes you watch films, it's like okay, this guy didn't like working with that guy, and it shows on screen. Like there were scenes like going the movie stay, chair up scene. Oh, yeah, that like you call back from Civil War, Civil War. But no, but even going back to other Marvel films. uh, Sometimes I don't know if it was tension between uh Robert Downey Jr. and Benedict Cumberbatch, but some of their scenes together were very bland. That's so the why ke- and, and, and sorry, could you finish yeah. your thing? No, it's just saying, like, so the chemistry wasn't there, and you don't invest yourself into these characters. Yeah. Whereas you can see Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan, like they really have fun working together, and it yep. shows on screen. 100 percent And uh I, I I think what you brought up is uh something I want to touch on. So this is a thing that a lot of people in the movie community on, on Instagram and the internet believe that infinity war is a superior movie to Endgame, which I disagree. I think Endgame is the best Marvel movie. I think there's so much 
packed into that. At Infinity War, this is my problem. You pointed out a good issue. The, a lot of the actors seem like they didn't have chemistry together or they didn't want to work together. A lot yeah. of the acting was flat. As a comic book reader, I knew all the deaths were going to happen. So when it happened, mm -hmm. it was not impactful to me. I understand you as someone who doesn't read comic books, not you specifically, but no, someone <laughs> who doesn't, yeah. would be like, oh my God, Spider-Man died. But to me, I was like, well, they all die in the comic. So it's like, whatever. There's nobody left. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's like, so for me, that had no impact. For me, the impact was in Endgame when everybody came back. I was like, this is what I want. When when Black Widow had to kill herself to... Uh, Sacrifice to, herself to get the, the Soul, Soul Stone. Stone. Yeah. Those were like impactful deaths to me. That was like... Not Gamora's no. death in the first no, one. It was, yeah. I, but let's be honest. Like I don't mean this in a mean way. I don't even want Gamora back. She is the least entertaining part of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Um, Bring, give me more Nebula. I, I'd take Nebula yes, over. Yes, hundred percent. Her chemistry, Nebula with with first of all with Tony Stark was great. Was fantastic, and you could tell even even in Infinity War, uh, uh what's his name, Chris Pratt and Robert Downey, they were kind of like trying to fight for screen time. Hey, yes. I'm the comedic relief. I'm the comedic yes. relief. No, I'm the comedic. Where like, where him and Thor, the comedic timing between the two of them was like whoa. When Chris Pratt and him were together, I was like, oh my god, and fantastic. Then, oh my god. Even just Chris Pratt going to rocket. Hello, rabbit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, oh my god. No, but yeah, and and like that's he's one of the characters that has evolved tremendously over the course of these Avengers. I don't hate is... Infinity War, just so everyone knows. No, 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 no. It's they're all fantastic films. Like Marvel has done a fantastic job from Iron Man when they thought this was never going to take off to whatever they've released recently. I can't even yeah. remember now. But like they've done a fantastic job, and once again, it's that slow burn. I think what Infinity War suffered from was there were too many big name people in the film. And it's like, okay, we got to fight and every, we got to fight for everybody's screen time. Everybody has to have screen and it, time. It feels kind of pushed. Everything feels pushed a little bit just to get it going. We're in end game. It was more of a cohesive unit. Like when you saw them, they were mostly doing things together. Yeah. So you didn't have to have all these individual spinoffs of what's going on with this guy. Where is this guy right Some now? Some people are on Saturn. Some people are on Titan. Some yeah. people are on Earth. And they, like it was they handled that so well. They did. And, in, in Endgame, it's like, it's kind of like a whole new, they took what you thought you knew about the comic books and were like, we're going to do it our way and do it better. Where Infinity War was like paint yeah. by numbers, almost what happens in the comic books. Yeah. Whereas like, like I, I, that's where I differentiate from a lot of people too, is as much as I love the comic books, I love storytelling. Yeah. That's one thing I love about comic books. And I can differentiate the fact that Yes, what happens in the comic books is one thing, and it doesn't have to be exactly what it is in the movie. You can take this, like, for example, like a minor character like Carly Morgenthau. In the comic books, it's one person. Flag Smasher is Carl Morgenthau. You do a gender swap, and it's fine. Like, 100%, as long as the story is good. Yeah, and they wrote it, the story well, and they picked a good actress to do yeah. it. She played it well. And it, as long as you got, give me that storytelling, I'm invested. It doesn't... I. I because I, I'm invested into the multiverse. I understand that there's a multiverse. So what's happening in the MCU doesn't necessarily have to happen in the comic books. It can diverge a little bit. It's that I whole agree. back to the future thing, right? That like is, Marty goes back to 1955, gives the almanac, yeah. Biff finds it, and he changes the future. That's what it could be. And that's a conversation we've had before. I don't care if you do gender or race or fucking robot swaps if you do it right don't just tell do it because story. you want to sell tickets that is not the reasoning to do this like pandering yeah it, it's so pandering exactly like they're making a remake of father of the bride i don't know why this upsets me so much but yeah it's i like, saw you post that it the other holds day. so dear in my heart this movie and you're gonna replace steve martin with An andy icon. garcia as much as I love Andy Garcia, Steve Martin is an icon. And, and he's you, the face of that franchise. You've, you've chosen now, I know this is so off topic. Yeah. You've chosen your three main actors. None of them are comedy actors for a comedy movie. Why do you think that remakes don't work sometimes? Maybe because Father of the Bride is going to be a mafia movie. If, if you wanted to yeah, if you wanted to remake it with uh, an all like Spanish cast or Latin cast, uh, South cool. American cast, cool. But pick people that will play the roles properly. Like yeah. you, you shouldn't have gone out and got dramatic actors and a singer to play these roles. Yeah. You, you could have done so much better. 
And to me, that's why it upsets me. I would have rather had you make me a part three and bring back yeah. Smart and Steve Short, Martin. bring back Eugene Levy, bring back Steve Martin. So yeah. this is this is my pitch. You bring back all those great actors. You can bring back all the new new people you could put in the movie. You could have Kevin Hart in the movie. You could have whoever new modern people. Make it about the daughter's kid getting married. Getting married. And then you can make Kieran yeah. Culkin, who played the son, you could make him gay now because we haven't seen him since he was like 10, 12 years old. And yeah. then all of a sudden you have this diversity and it's modern and it, it, it can tell a great story. I, yeah. I understand. And you For already me, have the like, foundation. Yeah. The the yeah, the 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 seeds are already planted there. Yes. Now you're gonna go remake a movie that's beloved. It if it sucks, people are gonna bash the shit out of it. Well, look what happened with Ghostbusters. Yeah. I mean like it's, it's like they could have eat the, they, they could have told an easy story, like to have the have the actors that were in it, that's fine. Uh, Melissa McCarthy, all of them. I don't care. But have it tell the story of them passing the torch from one onto the other. That's what I wanted. That would have worked so much better for me because you. Because I like had... Kate McKinnon. I like Kate McKinnon. I like Kristen Wiig. I like Melissa McCarthy. I like all of them as actors. I think, and to me, okay, this is my opinion on it. It's not a good Ghostbusters movie, but it's a good. It's a really good comedy. I laugh my ass off if you watch. It's the funny. Extended, uh, it's extended funny. Cut, yeah, it's hilarious. Chris Helmsworth is so funny in it. He's over the top, and it's great because and you don't see that from it him just. A lot. It doesn't work as a Ghostbusters movie to me, which is I don't understand the hate for it that people have, but I understand I don't hate that it people I don't like it as a Ghostbusters movie. I mean, because if you really look at it, Ghostbusters two sucks. Oh, I I I. As far as a movie goes, if this wasn't a Ghostbusters movie, I'll take this Ghostbusters over two. Yeah, but but, but two has a place for me. I love watching it, but it, I understand it's nostalgia that it's not that, that good. One. Anyways, we've gone far off topic, way off topic. But um, this going back to like what we're talking about diversity and like uh, alternating timelines and stuff. So timelines can alter. So what happens in the movie does not have to happen in the comics. Yes, like you know, like we were discussing on the Marvel on the Marvel uh, fantasy booking, not the fantasy booking, the our predictions of what they're going to do. How we were talking about the Herald of Galactus. Thor is now the Herald of Galactus. They don't need to do that. They don't need to do that at all. They can do something else with that. Because they haven't done the Silver Surfer justice yet. So bring back the Silver Surfer. You know what I mean? Like they can do other things. Like you can take elements like the, like the, like even this, like the Cap storyline where Falcon becomes Cap. They took the concept from that storyline where Falcon becomes Cap, but they told their own story and they told their own original story. And 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 they did a fantastic. Introducing John Walker through that, let you have a, a quick brush through of what happens in the comics with without like overdoing it they let you have that little hint yeah. that maybe it's going to be bucky which is a nod to the comics and that's the kind of stuff i like and but i even the nod I of think... isaiah bradley who was the black who was the first black captain america yeah. you know what i mean like there are little nods here and there that they're there you acknowledge the hardcore fans but let me tell you a new story yeah and i i like what they did and i yeah. think that speaking of silver surfer i think in the next guardians you, he's not going to be part of the movie, like, but you're going to get either a post credit scene or something in the movie where they mention it because they're going to have to bring Galactus in eventually. Yeah. If they're going to do the Fantastic Four film, I, I agree 100%. But even not Fantastic Four, Galactus no. went to the, uh, Kang as well, didn't he? The Marvel, I don't know if it was Marvel now, but there was a recent run of like a really cartoony looking Silver Surfer. I don't remember who did it. Mark, was it Mark Wade? I don't know. But uh, it was might have been. It was. I haven't read that one. I read the first two volumes, and it was really enjoyable because he's such like a no emotion character, and they put him with a girl that's like really bubbly, and it's like okay. I gotta check out. I got. I gotta check out that run then. I haven't checked that one. It's pretty good actually. Okay. Anyways, I don't have anything else. You have anything? No. uh, I don't have anything else. Uh, Like I said, give Wyatt Russell that Emmy. Yeah, I mean, he was really good. What would you rate this show out of (laughs) ten? I'm going to say it's in the low eights. Yeah, I'm giving it about an 8.5, 8.6, somewhere around there as well. Yeah. It was fantastic. There are some things they could have done better, but yeah, it's really high. It's, I think it's definitely a step up from WandaVision, which now I would probably say is like a 7.8. And this show is yeah. probably like an 8.2 or something like that. Um, it's definitely better, but it's it's still... It, it kind of, it wasn't enough. Like in the last episode, I know we were trying yeah. to end this episode, but yeah. in the last episode, everything was kind of underwhelming. Yeah. You knew that big fight scene was coming, right? It, it, like it just, it immediately starts with a big fight scene and then continues that big fight scene throughout the rest of the episode. 
Yeah, I, I noticed that too. It's like, okay, we got to tie up every loose end now in 55 minutes. And it doesn't explain how we got to where we start in that episode. It just starts and you're like, yeah. wait, what happened to everything else? How did we get here? But Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. It's not but, as underwhelming as the finale of WandaVision, no, but it was it still had, left more to be desired. Because it had a good resolution to me at the end. At least that's what I thought. And it, it gets me looking forward to see what they're going to do with Loki. All right. Well... Guys, if you've made it through this four and a half hour episode, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I talked too much. Let us know what you rated in the comments. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe.